This is Ducrypt's Encryption Basics video. Please check the website for others. Encryption Basics, well, they really haven't changed much in a few thousand years. So this video and the next two are going to look into some of these methods. This video is about shift. Shuffle, the next video, is more secure than shift, and multi-shift is more secure than shuffle. The two most important components in encryption are method and key size. And then, of course, protecting your chosen key. And we'll show you why key size is really the amount of potential keys that a particular method has. This will be crucial in understanding when to use 128 or 256 bit or another length of key. Before we take a look at these methods, uh, just let's define some terms. Unencrypted data, whether it be text, music, video, etc., is called plain or clear text and will always be shown as black on white. Encrypted data will always be shown as yellow on black. Folks that create encryption methods are called cryptographers. Those that have a deep understanding of those methods and can remove the encryption, often without a key, are called cryptanalysts. If you want to refer to both of them as a group, you use the word cryptologist. And for thousands of years, cryptographers have been locking up messages until the cryptanalyst picks the lock and the cryptographer builds a better lock and the game continues. One of the most simple and oldest cipher methods is usually referred to as Caesar cipher. I'm going to call it shift for reasons you'll see, and it's also known as rot. Caesar cipher simply shifts the plain text, the number denoted by the key. So with a key of 1, a plus 1 equals b. Likewise, n plus 1 equals o. i plus 1 is j. There's another n. E plus 1 is F, A plus 1 is B, etc. And with a key of 2, A plus 2 equals C. Likewise, with our plain text message, N becomes P, I becomes K, E becomes G. Sometimes counting on the fingers helps a lot. Historians tell us that Caesar used a key of 3. And his less smart nephew, Augustus, used a key of 1. In any case, with a shift of 3, get your fingers ready, A plus 3 is D, so N becomes OPQ, I becomes JKL, E becomes FGH, etc. We call the key shift 1. It's really, of course, shift 1111 26 times. In the same way, a shift key 3 is really 26 threes. Since counting on our fingers every time to get the correct encrypted letter is quickly going to become a drag, and since we know the key is really 26 threes, we can pre compute this lookup table which we'll call a substitution alphabet, and that will really make encryption much faster and easier. So now that you know the mechanics, here's how I remember it. Shift 3 shifts the first three letters to the back. Everything else gets moved over. The substitution alphabet is going to make encryption a lot faster. So here, N becomes Q. I encrypts to L. E encrypts to H. And if you're not convinced the substitution alphabet's the way to go, try a shift of 11. The table's so easy to use and make, let's just get right to it. So we'll make a shift 11 substitution alphabet the same way we made a shift 3. Count out 11 letters, A to K, shift them to the back, everything else gets put in the front. 
and we have a shift key 11 substitution alphabet. So we'll pull the key 11 down from the last slide, replace the previous substitution alphabet with this one, and encryption just same way as before. And decryption just reverses the path. Shift only has 25 possible keys. A good way to visualize that is to take a look at the different substitution alphabets as we shift from 0 to 26. Shift 0 really doesn't encrypt at all because A encrypts to A, B to B, etc. Shift 1 shifts one letter, A, to the back. Everything else gets moved over. Shift 2 shifts A and B to the back, and everything else gets moved over. Shift 25 shifts A to Y over. Z becomes the first letter. Shift 26 shifts A to Z over, and it's just like Shift 0. So you can have some centurion carry around a bunch of tables for you, or if you're very fortunate, you can get an Ovaltine decoder ring. Find the link here at YouTube. There is more on these decoder rings at the end of Chapter 2 in our book. This may have been a pretty secure method when most people had a real tough time reading. Come to think of it, given children's reading scores, it may be a good method again. But in the meantime, cryptanalyzing is really pretty easy. The cryptanalyst simply puts the encrypted text up here and shifts each encrypted letter by one place. So I becomes J, L becomes M, etc. Well, that doesn't look like a message, so let's shift again. And since there's only 25 possible keys, meaningful English language will show sooner than later. And just to reinforce that there are only 25 possible encryptions, take a look at what happens after shift 26. There is the original encrypted text. When the cryptanalyst tries all possible keys, it's called an exhaustive search also known as a brute force attack against the key, not to be confused with beating it out of someone, called a rubber hose attack. As we've said, Shift only has 25 possible keys. AES keys are usually described as 128 or 256. This does not mean that AES keys are only about 5 or 10 times bigger than Shift keys. It's more like comparing the size of an atom to the size of the entire Earth. And even that is severely understating the situation. Our next pre-computer method has a universe full of keys.